Dear Diary, It looked like January would be kind to us fixture-wise, and thankfully that has been the case winning all of our games so far. The Titus being against Huddersfield where an injury timer Tete winner got us all 3 points. That means I am still unbeaten since joining, through the FA Cup 4th round, and now up to 9th on the championship table. So hopefully relegation is now out of the picture, and we can end the month with a win over Stoke. It's also nearly the end of the transfer window, albeit not a lot has happened yet. We sold some spare parts and were able to tell the board we would avoid a relegation battle, which meant we found the funds to offer Perry Ng a new contract. There's a new goalkeeper coming in on a free next season from Porto, but Pusini has been great thus far so he can keep the number one spot for this season. We have put a few loan bids in for strikers and could get a young Brazilian winger, but first up, time for some liquid counter-attacking football. Hopefully. Until next time. everyone and welcome to episode 38 of FMOE here, our second episode with Cardiff City on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play the last match in the championship for the month of January, taking on Stoke City, a team who were sort of interested in our services just before we did make the move to Cardiff City and off the back of that we will have deadline day and then play a fourth round FA Cup tie against divisional rivals in Huddersfield, so if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as we recapped in the intro off the back of where we did leave things at the end of our first full episode in charge of Cardiff City a few days ago, if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we did get through December unbeaten since we did take over because we weren't actually in charge for that first game of the month against Blackpool. But we did pick up three wins and two draws in that month, but off the back of that, it did look quite a kind January schedule for us, and thankfully that has proven to be the case. We've picked up wins in the league over Oxford United, Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield, that one the closest. It took a 90th minute goal there to Keon Atete for us to sneak away with all three points there, and then we most recently did beat Hall City by three goals to one, so it has meant we have got through the month so far undefeated in the league, and also we picked up a win in the third round of the FA Cup over League One opposition in MK Dons, as you would have seen, that does mean we are up to ninth now on the championship table, as we are about to close out the month with a clash against a Stoke City outfit, who as mentioned, were after our services around the same time that Cardiff City were, but in the end they did opt to go for Liberto de Zerbi over us, but if we can pick up another one here, that should hopefully give us a great chance of picking up Manager of the Month, if nothing else, and also might put us somewhat on the verge of staying to get in towards that playoff contention for the end of the season, not a bad job at all, remembering that when we took over Cardiff, we are just outside the relegation zone, in 21st spots has certainly been a great turnaround since we have taken charge of the Bluebirds and then off the back of that we are going to take on Huddersfield in the fourth round of that FA Cup. Hopefully this time we can pick up a result a little bit more comfortably and earlier than having to wait until the 90th minute and in between all of that we are going to try and do some business on deadline day here in January, albeit I say January it's actually the 2nd of February which has caught me out a little bit because I've put in some bids a little bit earlier otherwise than I would have but it does give us a little bit more time to hopefully get some players out of the door and get some new ones into the club here at Cardiff as we mentioned through the intro we have got a goalkeeper coming here for next season when Pusson unfortunately cannot stay because he is on loan and his work permit is unlikely to get renewed so coming in for next season is going to be Francisco Mexedo out of Porto, slightly higher star rating in terms of attributes, very, very similar to what we have there in person. So hopefully he can do a good job for us coming in on a free transfer. That is the only bit of business we have done in terms of incoming so far, but there could be a bit happening 
on deadline day. We've got two offers in, four strikers to come here on loan. Either Golan Cole from Newcastle, a player I'm somewhat familiar with being from this part of the world where the A-League is the local league kind of being in New Zealand. He could be a very interesting option coming in from Newcastle. And the other player that we are trying to get in on a loan to fill the striking spot because unfortunately we didn't have the money to sign someone as a backup for now for Keon Atete for this season with that small transfer budget and wage budget that we do have. But the other player we have put a loan bid in for because Kowal is wanted by Stoke City of all teams is Nicolo Trisoldi. He is an Italian out of Brighton. So one of those two players hopefully will join us on deadline day to be the backup or sort of competition for Keon Atete up front because he definitely needs a rest soon. So hopefully we get one of those guys. There are some other players we could go after if neither of them join us because Trisoldi is also wanted by Hull and Birmingham. But hopefully we have the wood over those guys based on our recent form. And we did put a bid in for a young Brazilian winger who can also play striker, but he's definitely a better looking wing option in William Gomez from Sao Paulo. We triggered his release clause of £215,000 and he looks like a high potential player who could be a very useful backup for us for the rest of this season. So hopefully those are some deals that we can get over the line. We only need one of those backup strikers and hopefully we also get William Gomez over the line as well. And there's still some players that I would like to get rid of that go alongside the ones we have already gotten out of the club, the likes of Dylan Phillips. He went to Wigan, Lewis Thomas to AFC Wimbledon, Taylor Jones to Grimsby Town, and Jake Clark sold it to Southend, that one, for a decent chunk of cash. The same was the case for Dylan Phillips. But unfortunately, because of the financial situation here at the club, we're only getting 50% of the transfer revenue made available to us for our transfer budget. It does mean we're not seeing a lot of that money. But at the very least, it has freed up that wage budget and it did mean that we could re-sign Perry Ng to a new contract, which did tick off one of those things, which somewhat was putting our managerial support in quite a poor situation these days that has gone up from abysmal to poor. And there's still a few players, as I said, we might look to get rid of the most noble is probably Jack Simpson. He's a left back who is third choice for us these days, can also cover centre back but not very good aerially, and he takes up around £17,000 a week. I'd like to get him off the books if I could, being a player who isn't going to get much game time for us. But first up today, we are going to try and go through the month of January undefeated as we do take on Stoke City. They are right below us on the league table at the moment. Of course, their former captain was Chris Wood until Roberto De Zerbi did take charge. So we are going to take on a fellow New Zealander, in this one, they have a decent team as well. If we go over and have a look at their last known lineup, they are playing the 5-2-2-1. A few interesting names in there. Harry Suter, who had a good campaign for Australia at the World Cup. Of course, they do have Chris Wood when they do opt to play him and also in behind the striker. Some decent young talent there in the likes of the former Liverpool man in James Balagizzi. So it's a decent looking Stoke City lineup here, but hopefully we can continue our good form and pick up some more points to continue our unbeaten streak here at Cardiff City. And we'll come back shortly with our team sheet as we take on Stoke from the Cardiff City Stadium. And here are the team sheets for this championship clash in today's episode. There we are. We have made some changes down our right-hand side. Perry Ng does come in for Hardy. Also, Robinson comes in for Galasai and McGuinness is out. Urhog Hyde, all three of those players are very, very highly injury prone. So hopefully giving them a rest here doesn't affect us too badly. And hopefully we pick up another three points and might sneak our way up that table a little bit further. And only five minutes into this one, we have our first highlight as a corner here for Stoke City. And Sutter gets his head on the end of that, the Australian. But thankfully that one goes just over the bar. So still nil all here. Coming up to the 10 minute mark. And now down the other end, Perry Ng. Was on the ball. A bit of a rash challenge there from Chris Wood. And he gets a straight red card, the Kiwi. And all of a sudden, this game has been turned on its head. We are playing against 10 men for 80 minutes. We are going to go on to positive thanks to that. And Coventry here does have a free kick. That forces a good save there from Bursic in goal for Stoke City. But Chris Wood 
Probably not impressing Roberto De Zerbi too much there because he did get stripped of the captaincy once he did get in charge of the club. And now he gets sent off here in this clash with two teams just outside of that promotion playoff zone. And now we are on the attack off the back of that corner, but unfortunately can't do anything just yet. But 12 minutes into this one, we do have a bit of an advantage playing against 10 men for the rest of this game, albeit in this highlight, Stoke City are in position, but thankfully Coventry there with a little bit of a fortunate interception. And now Robinson will loop one forward here to Atete. In behind the defence, and Keon Atete continues his great start to our time in charge here at Cardiff City. Does the lovely knee slide into the corner with most of the home fans, and we take advantage of playing against 10 men nice and early. Keona Tete beats the goalkeeper there just inside that far post. And we go 1-0 up just inside 15 minutes. And about halfway through the first half, we do get our next highlight in this one. 1-0 up against the 10 men of Stoke. But unfortunately there, we do give the ball away. Balagazi with a shot from just outside the box. But thankfully, that one goes just wide. And we still hold our 1-0 advantage. And that is half time in this championship clash. Thankfully, we do take a 1-0 lead into the sheds off the back of those highlights that we did get off the back of that red card to Chris Wood. That could be a big moment in this game. But apart from that, the second part of this first half, not a lot went on. In terms of XG, Stoke City actually slightly higher. But thankfully, we do take a 1-0 lead into the sheds. We'll tell the boys to keep going because we can definitely get a result here we'll get the second half back underway with that 1-0 lead and up to the hour mark we are going to make our first change in this one no highlights so far in the second half but Ruben Colwell down to a red heart will give him a little bit of a rest Alex Patterson to come on for him still with that 1-0 lead and up to the 69 minute mark we're going to make a few more changes here unfortunately Erhog Hyde not playing that well today at centre back so we'll bring on Mark McGuinness even though he is quite injury prone at the moment and also both of our wingers are playing decently, but down to Red Hearts, that does mean that Davies can come on the left wing, and we'll also play Galasai on the right wing for these last 20 minutes, still with that one goal lead. And very shortly off the back of that most recent bunch of substitutions, we have a corner and McGuinness off the bench gets his head on the end of that, just puts it wide, and we are still 1-0 up. And a few minutes off the back of that previous chance, we're going to make our last substitution at this time. A few of our midfielders down to a Red Heart Coventry on the worst rating, so Andy Rinamata can come on for him. That's all of our subs used. Still 1-0 up with 12 minutes left. And very shortly off the back of that last substitution, we do have a throw in here inside the final field. We have gone back to balance just to make sure we don't blow this late here against the 10 men of Stoke, because so far, we've just failed to put this one away. I thought that one might have gone in there for Patterson, but unfortunately the graphic was just a change there for Stoke City as they bring on one of their strikers who they do have loan listed as a player I do have as a backup in case we can't get Kual or the bloke from Brighton to come here on loan. But hopefully we do get one of them across the line. And we do have a free kick here with only four minutes left. And Raul's here, good chance to send a Tete through. He buries that bottom right corner. He grabs his ninth league goal of the season. He has been our star since we have come here to Cardiff City. And surely that will wrap that result up against the brave 10 men of Stoke City off the back of that red card to Chris Wood Atete. Put through well there by Rolales. He tucks that away in the bottom left corner. And we are 2-0 up with only a few minutes left, albeit we do get a late free kick in this one just outside of the box. And Rolales might try and put this one, I would say, in the top left corner. Let's see if he can do it. He's tried to put it there. It just goes over the bar. And it does look like we are going to pick up a solid 2-0 result here at home to make sure we do go through the month of January picking up all wins. And that should hopefully give us a good shout of picking up manager of the month as well. And it might sneak us up the league table a little bit further, but we are still undefeated as manager here at Cardiff City. In the end, a solid 2-0 win over Stoke, albeit obviously that red card to Chris Wood early did have a big impact. But Atete gets a double and we pick up three more points in the championship. And now maybe we can start to think with a few additions in this transfer window that we might be able to make a push for the playoffs. Because as you can see, we are now only five points away from Norwich in sixth spot. 
and not all that far behind those teams up near the top of the table when you do consider we have made our way up from 21st when we did first take over here. So it's been a brilliant start at Cardiff City. We pick up three more points against Stoke. We'll come back shortly and get stuck in to some transfer deadline day action. And we are back a slight lie before because we have come back a little bit before deadline day because we have got some awards for January. As you can see, Huddersfield have the player of the month there, but Kiana Tete did finish in second. But the reason that we have come back, as expected, we did pick up manager of the month with those five wins from our five games beating Vincent Company of Rotherham. Did not expect to see that. And the bloke from Crystal Palace as well, but we pick up manager of the month in our first full month in charge here at Cardiff City. And we are back on deadline day for this January transfer window, albeit it does fall on the 2nd of February. But nonetheless, we have our first update. Grand Cole has chosen to go to Stoke City over us. I kind of get that now, because I suppose Chris Wood is suspended and probably out of favour there with Deserby off the back of that red card that he did just pick up. But Kual has gone to Stoke. But thankfully, Trisoldi from Brighton has decided to come here. And to be fair, it's probably a better deal for us because we don't have to pay him any wage at all. So that's quite a good deal for us. We are going to get this one over the line. And Niccolo Trizoldi is going to join us as the other striking option alongside Keon Atete, which is good because he is quite injury prone at the moment, but he is in good form. So hopefully we are able to give him a rest where needed. But as you can see, Niccolo Trizoldi, now we can have a look at some more hard set attributes for him. A good solid backup and also quite a decently sized bloke as well. So hopefully he will do a good job as a Tite's backup here in the second half of the season at Cardiff City with that three and a half star current ability and that five star potential, albeit looking up just a little bit further. The news not so good with that young Brazilian winger who we were going to try and sign. Unfortunately, he has re-signed with Sao Paulo, so it does mean that maybe I need to try and find another winger to try and join us here at Cardiff City for the rest of the season, albeit we might be pushed into also making that one alone. And I've gone and tried to find a attacking midfielder winger who we could sign on loan for the rest of the season with that deal for the Brazilian falling through, unfortunately. And this is the best player that I could find, Mohamed Ahatalan out of Juventus. We are paying them 3.2 thousand a week when he plays and 1.6 thousand a week when he doesn't. But he comes here as a squad player for the rest of the season, not the deal I was hoping to do. Ideally, would have got that Brazilian but he still looks like a decent player for the championship and with some potential as well. So Mohamed Ahitalin does come in as the sort of backup to that Brazilian that we were hoping to sign. A quick look at his attributes actually looks quite good with mostly blue color attributes and some nice yellow ones as well. He should be a good versatile option for us off the bench and might even work his way into the first team, especially at the moment, because that bloke that we did just get in on loan is out injured for six days to three weeks. That is typical. And also Isaac Davies has picked up an injury, one of our other wing backup options. So he could get some early game time potentially in this upcoming FA Cup clash against Huddersfield. But Mohamed Ahitalin comes here to fill that backup wing attacking midfielder spot. And we go forward to only having three hours left in this transfer window. And finally, someone has come in for Jack Simpson, the man who is third choice at left back for us and is taking up £17,000 a week in wage budgets. Definitely a player I want to get rid of. And Sunderland are bidding just under that £650,000 that he is worth, albeit about a third of that is going to be coming in installments over the next 12 months. That is definitely an offer. I do want to accept, I suppose, the thing that we do now need to consider. Do we need a little bit of extra centre-back backup? Because he also could cover centre-back for us. Maybe that's something that we can try and potentially do here in these last three hours. We do have a few players on our shortlist who we could bring in as a free transfer. So I think I'll put some bids in for those guys. And hopefully we get one over the line before the transfer deadline and registration deadline closes here in the championship. And we are back just past the transfer deadline and the registration deadline. The good news, we did get rid of Jack Simpson to Sunderland getting that £17,000 
off of the wage budgets that definitely gave us a bit to work with, but unfortunately we couldn't get anyone in in time to replace him as a centre-back backer. We actually tried to sign quite a promising looking left-back come centre-back Englishman who is playing for Akranes over in Iceland, a team I'm quite familiar with, of course, from our Husevik hero save last year. He would have cost us quite cheap, but unfortunately did not have enough time to get that one over the line. Definitely a player I would like to bring in in the next transfer window because he does look very, very tasty indeed at only 18 years old. But also we did try and get a free agent to sign for us. That would have been Jamal Tabidze, but unfortunately he's taken too long to sign off on his contract. And that does mean he won't be able to be registered for the rest of the championship season. So we've only made two additions to the squad for the second half of this championship season. They being both on loan and Trisole up front and Ihataran just in behind. In fact, I tell her why, because our under-21 manager did sign a centre-back from Nantes. So he could actually be the backup for us off the back of that sale of Simpson, albeit I did only go through with this one because he's really tall and good in the air at 2.01 metres tall. He could be a bit sneakily better than he does look on paper, but he is a player that we did sign, albeit not for a very big fee, and he will probably lurk in our under-21s for the most part of the second part of the season. Just got him in case he did end up being something decent, but we did get rid of quite a few players. Simpson, we loaned out quite a few, and also, as we mentioned earlier on, Clark Salter, Jones, Thomas, and Phillips are certainly getting rid of some dead wood here at Cardiff, but that does mean our wage budget now in a much healthier situation, and hopefully we can make the most of that as well at the start of next season, but we'll come back shortly and get stuck in to our fourth round FA Cup tie. As we do take on Huddersfield, we did beat them not that long ago, albeit it did take us a fair while to get the breakthrough in that game, and they are struggling just a little bit down in 20th as well, so hopefully this is a winnable game for us on our recent form, even though they do have Steven Gerrard in charge. Not too sure if that's a positive or a negative, but we'll come back shortly and hopefully continue our unbeaten run here at Cardiff City and make our way through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. And here are the team sheets for this FA Cup fourth round clash. There are Huddersfield with their 4-3-3. Hopefully we can pick up another win against these guys. We've made a few changes. Erhog Hyde stays in at centre-back with McGuinness still being quite injury-prone. Hardy back at right-back as well. And our new signing, Ihatalan, is going to start on the right wing thanks to injuries to both Robertson and to Galasai, which do mean they're a little bit injury-prone at the moment and we'll probably play it safe with them. But an early highlight here to Huddersfield from a free kick. Some Fox just bumps that one into the bar. Thankfully, we're able to clear that one away and now go down the other end for a corner of our own, and Erhog Hyde gets his head on the end of that one. Thankfully, we keep him in the team. He is looking for a bit more playing time at the moment, so we do fulfill a promise, the same as the case for Atite, but I can't imagine he's going to be failing that one with all the game time we've been giving him. But a good start for us. There we go, 1-0 up after only three minutes. And about 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal, it is now a free kick to Huddersfield, who this time will have to come from behind a lot earlier than they had to last time. A Hatar in there does come in a fair way from where he should be out on the right wing. And Harris here, close range, but thankfully Pisson makes a good save. He is in great form for us in goal, and we still hold our 1 0 lead. And 10 minutes off the back of that previous highlight, we have another one here this time. We are on the attack, and Ihatalan. Doesn't quite win that long ball out. Fox does get in the way of that one. But thankfully Coventry does win the ball back for us here. And we might get a chance. Juckless plays this one up to Keona Tete. He beats the goalkeeper. He is on absolute fire, Keona Tete. That's his 10th goal of the season. And it puts us 2-0 up in what so far has been quite a topsy-turvy game in the first half of this first half. But we've been quite efficient in front of goal with that corner. And now Atete, and he puts us 2-0 up. And not too long before half time, is another highlight here in this first half. Huddersfield do get a chance here to try and play out from the back. But so far, a good first half for us. Huddersfield have had their chances, but we've been a bit more efficient with ours, albeit Lovelace here. Does get in behind, but that is a great save from Pusson. 
yet again he is having a blinder for us since we have come to the club. Glad that we did put him in goal and got rid of the former man in Phillips. They do have a corner here, some great chances, but somehow Huddersfield don't put that one in the back of the net and we still hold our 2-0 no lead. And it is half time in this fourth round FA Cup clash. Thankfully, we do have a 2-0 no lead, even though stats-wise this game is quite even and Huddersfield do actually have a slightly higher XG, but those first half goals to Urho Hyde and to the man, of course, in Kiana Tete do mean that we do have our two-goal buffer. And at the moment, no changes needed. We'll get things back underway. Two goals up. And just past the hour mark, we're going to make our first substitution in this one. We're going to have to bring on one of those players who is a little bit injury prone at the moment. And Callum Robinson, that is because Jacqueline has gone down to a red heart. Hopefully, we don't regret that too much as we have a half hour left and are still 2-0 up. And up to the 70 minute mark, we're going to make another substitution in this one. Now it's Rawls who has gone down to a red heart. No highlights so far in the second half, but Andy Lunamata can come on for him. I think he's a bit better defensively than our other defensive midfield option in Patterson. 20 minutes left and still two goals up. And going forward, only a few minutes off the back of that previous substitution, it's time for us to make the remainder that we do have because three players are down to red hearts. Keanu Tete can come off for Galasai. Hopefully, he does not get injured as he does have an orange injury. Hang over his head. Also, Patterson can come on for Colwell. And we'll bring on Xavier Benjamin. He's being called up from the under-21s with those sales of centre-backs that we did make in that most recent transfer window. He can play as the defensive midfielder for the last few minutes of this one. In fact, we might even play him as a halfback, actually being a centre-back. And hopefully we can hold on here with 15 minutes left. Still 2-0 up. And finally, something happening on the field here in the second half. It's taken to the 82-minute mark for us to get a highlight. It's a free kick, and we are on the attack. Lovely ball that from Ehtal, and he will get an assist on debut. Suhail Galasai comes off the bench. Puts that one away and that will put the dagger into Huddersfield. We will pick up a 3-0 win at the least in this one. Albeit I suppose they could still get a goal back. But nice ball over the top and Galasai beats the Huddersfield goalkeeper. 3-0 less than 10 minutes left. And we're just inside the last few minutes of this one now. And Huddersfield do have a late throw in. And unfortunately Nelson does bring down that Huddersfield attacker inside the box. But to be fair, this is only going to be a consolation goal for them because we are 3-0 up, and we do only have three minutes of added time. Radoni does send Pisson there the wrong way, so they do grab a consolation goal from the penalty spot. But overall, that was a very, very solid performance here in this fourth round of the FA Cup away from home. A lot more comfortable than we did make it when we only played them a few weeks ago in the championship. In terms of the stats, it was actually quite an even game, but thankfully we were quite efficient in front of goal, of course, with the likes of Atete being in such good form. And we pick up a 3-1 win, which does mean we will go through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. So I think we'll leave things today by seeing who we are going to play in that round. So we'll come back shortly and see who we do get out of the hat for that fifth round of the FA Cup. And going for a few days off the back of that fourth round win over Huddersfield in the FA Cup, I thought we'd just get straight to the point and not bother with the draw for this competition and we are going to be taking on Premier League opposition for the first time in the save we are taking on Watford who surprisingly are currently up in 11th in the Premier League in the save universe in 2026 so we will take them on and that game is going to be played at our home stadium hopefully on our recent form if we can carry that into late February hopefully we have a sneaky chance there of picking up a win against Premier League opposition and maybe making our way through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup in our first season in charge. A quick look at Watford, as you can see, currently 11th in the Premier League. Marcelino is in charge of those guys, captain by Lloyd Kelly. They do still have Yao Pedro at the club. They play a 4-4-2. Hopefully, we can do ourselves justice there as we do take on Premier League opposition for the first time, but I think that's what's going to come up in the next episode alongside a championship game. And I think that game might be the local derby here in Wales. It's not too far away from that most recent game, which we did play, but we do take on Swansea away from home. Probably a good game to come back for in the month of February. So that's what's going to be coming up the next time that you do see me. We take on Swansea in the championship. 
and will go forward to take on Watford in the FA Cup fifth round as well. But if you did enjoy today's episode with those two wins and the end of this January transfer window, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well until a few days time for that Swansea Watford double header. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.